Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. This weekend, we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Trinity. And so we begin with this greeting from 2 Corinthians 13. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And our Gospel for Trinity Sunday is according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 16 through 20. This is called Jesus's Great Commission. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the eons. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And the title of our message for Trinity Weekend is Trinity, Lover, Beloved, Love. Uh, let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So our Muslim cousins um, struggle with us Christians because of this Thing we are celebrating today called the Holy Trinity, God as three in one and one in three. And to Muslims, that sounds like polytheism. And of course, they are very, very strictly monotheistic. But I feel like this is a good case of needing some good interreligious um, dialogue because no, we are not celebrating three gods, but God who is indeed one in three and three in one, God who is unity and diversity. Um, and so uh, I'd like us to think about uh, the Trinity um, and some of you know I, um, my last class I took when I got my doctorate was an independent study um, where I did a 45-page paper on the Trinity. Do not worry, I will not share all of that with you in this message. But um, I do need to say that the word Trinity um, is not in the Bible, but the concept or the idea of the Trinity is. And this weekend, on Trinity Weekend, the first reading that is given for Trinity Weekend is Genesis 1-1, the whole chapter. Because um, Trinitarians claim that in that uh, first chapter of the book of Genesis, the first book of the entire Bible, we indeed see the whole Trinity present. We have God, the Creator, who creates the entire cosmos. We have Jesus Christ, the word that God speaks. And in the prologue to the Gospel of John, which echoes Genesis 1, John 1 echoes Genesis 1, it begins, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and all things came into being through him. So we have Christ as the word of God that's spoken and brings about creation. And then of course we have the Holy Spirit 
ruach, that breath of life, that wind that blows over the waters of creation, and that breath of God that brings forth life. So we have, if you will, Father or Creator, Jesus or Word, and Holy Spirit, wind or breath of life. The second reading uh, in the Bible, which does speak specifically of the Trinity, is the one I used as our invocation, and that's from um, 2 Corinthians 13, verses 11 through 13, where St. Paul writes, And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion or fellowship communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And there we see a little, a slightly different Trinitarian formula. It starts with Jesus and then God and then the Holy Spirit. Um, Trinitarians also say that the other two places where um, the Trinity is present in the Bible is in the baptism of Jesus where um, at Jesus's baptism, we have the Father, who's that voice from heaven, behold, my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. We, of course, have Jesus present at his baptism. And we have the Holy Spirit when the heavens um, open and the Holy Spirit descends in the form of the dove. So there, too, we have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in today's gospel, gospel from Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20, that's known as Jesus's Great Commission, um, he gives us this um, baptismal formula that many Bible scholars believed was used in the earliest Christian communities, that when we baptize, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So those are the places where the concept or the idea of the Trinity are found in the Bible. It never uses the word Trinity, but the concept or the idea is certainly present. Now, when I did write my 45-page paper on the Trinity, um, the paper was called something like The Trinity, God as Relational. And that's because um, what many, Bibles, what many um, Bible scholars and theologians believe is what the Trinity is all about. And I'm speaking uh, to theologians who are very important in this regard are Catherine Lacuna who wrote God for us, and Ted Peters, um, who wrote also a book about the Trinity. And these two theologians do mention that one of the things that, that's so important about the Holy Trinity and is what it's trying to teach us is that God, by God's very nature, is relational and that there is this in God, within God, there is this unity which is includes and incorporates diversity. Okay, so we're going to look at those two things, God as relational and God as unity, including diversity. Um, so God is relational. When I wrote my paper, I mentioned that the very word Father that we usually use for the first person of the Trinity is a relational word. You can't be a father without having a child, right? Father is a relational word. It, um, presupposes this um, child, this relationship. 
in a similar way, the word son is a relational word. You can't be a son without having a parent, okay? And then the Holy Spirit for ages has been seen as that love, which is certainly relational, which binds you know, the father to the son and the son to the father and all of us as children of God to God, the father and the son. So that leads us to love. The title of today's sermon, Trinity, Lover, Beloved, Love, as a designation of the Holy Trinity is not mine. I did not make that up. I take that from St. Augustine, the great father, early Christian father, who is from North Africa, who lived from 354 to 450, so very early on in the Christian church. And he's the one who wrote of God as lover, the Trinity as God as lover, beloved, and love. So, lover. Once again, that's a very relational word. Love is not something that exists outside of relationship. Um, it requires a subject, right? I love you, I love my husband, I love my children, etc. It requires a subject, okay? Beloved, right? When Jesus is baptized, the voice of God proclaims, Behold, my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So Augustine sees Jesus as God's beloved. But we, of course, know, and Jesus tells us that as the Father has loved him, so he loves us and we are to abide in his love. So we too, sisters and brothers, are beloved ones of God. And I also cannot help but think of that beautiful um, description of Dr. Martin Luther King of the beloved community, right? The community where all of us realize that we are part of this God who is love. We are all beloved ones and so should treat one another as beloved ones. And then finally, the Holy Spirit as love. God as lover, Jesus and us as beloved, and the Holy Spirit as love itself. Um, that energy, that binding force, that most powerful force in the world that has changed hearts and minds and human history, love, God who is love. The older I get, I think more and more of God as love. On Thursday, I was part of a book club um, where we were, it was a, an issue, the, the book we were studying is a book called The Purpose uh, Gap, Empowering Communities of Color to um, Thrive, and by Patrick Reyes. And um, we were talking about equity and inclusion and diversity and how, you know, we've been working on this for a long time now, especially many of us since the 60s, and yet the dial has barely gone up in terms of um, equity and inclusion and diversity. And so um, we, we had a conversation about how can we make, how can we become more inclusive and how can we make our institutions more inclusive? And 
um, we kind of discussed the problem at this first session, but for our next session in a couple of weeks, we hope to come up with some um, ideas for solution. Well, afterwards, some of us were, were really, you know, kind of um, gripped by this conversation and remained afterwards. And one of the people, and we all agreed, said that it really um, won't change until we let love reign. And she spoke about how, especially in many older generations, you know, you have people who um, grew up um, in a world that was, that did not seem as diverse. Um, and so racial diversity, um, diversity in terms of um, sexuality, sexual orientation, sexual identity, right? These were things that weren't really discussed years ago. And so for many older people, um, they just, they, they don't get that. And yet what we said is when an older person has a grandchild that they deeply love and this grandchild um, comes out and identifies in the LGBTQ spectrum or this grandchild that they deeply love says, I'm in love and it's with someone of a different race or ethnic group, that because of love, even people who are kind of resistant to diversity and inclusion because they love their grandchild, they will open. They will open to this. And, um, and so sisters and brothers, um, as we think about the Holy Trinity, God as lover, all of us, equally as beloved of God, and the Holy Spirit as love, as we look at the, the struggles of um, equity and the struggles and challenges of diversity and inclusion, may we ask and may we pray that God, who is love, will fill us with God's love, will first of all, help us to realize how beloved we are. But then from that place of knowing God's unconditional love for us, can we begin to see that all are God's beloved ones? And then can that move us? I hope and I pray that it can move us to love others as God in Christ has loved us. So sisters and brothers, as we celebrate the Holy Trinity, may we celebrate our oneness, our deep, true nature of one, being one as God is one in diversity. And may we celebrate God who is lover, beloved, and love itself. Amen. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen.